In order to export a model directly into the Giants editor and have it as prepared as possible for the game, the hierarchy of the model should also be well thought out, and the individual objects for the i3D mapping should be named in a correct and meaningful way. If we open up Blender, this is the default layout. Let's delete the camera, the light, and also the cube. First, we make sure that our cursor, which is the origin point if we want to create objects, is in the center of our layout. Press Shift plus C to do this. In space, the cursor is at point 0, 0, 0 now. Furthermore, we should check if Sort Alphabetically is activated in the filter for our scene collection. Up next, we create three simple structures in the place of the cursor in our layout, which will be used as placeholders or simplified explanations for our future detailed models. Via Object Mode, Add, Mesh, Cube, a cube will be added, and we can also set the appropriate size in the box to the left. We repeat this procedure with a cylinder, as well as a sphere. And to distinguish them better, we move the three created objects in different directions in our workspace. Finally, we add three empty points via Add, Empty, Plane Axis. After we have created one, we can copy the element by selecting it and pressing the Control c key combination and insert two more identical elements by pressing Control v in the Giants Editor, we name these empty points Transform Group, and since we can name elements as we want within the Scene Collection, we can double-click these to change the name to Transform Group. Elements with the same name get a self-increasing numerical value as an addition, starting with 0, 0, 1. To change the hierarchy, we move our cylinder into the cube and the sphere into one of our empty transform groups with the left mouse button while holding down the shift key. We move the other two transform groups into our sphere as so-called childs. Clicking on our sphere, we can assign a material to the mesh via the material properties, the red round icon here. Selecting new will create a material. By double-clicking it, we can also change the name directly. The material of our sphere should have the name Blue Steel. If we open the Giants Exporter with the key N, select the location and the name, we are able to export our scene as an i3D file with a click on Export All. Next, we have a look at the i3D file with the Giants Editor. We can examine the hierarchy and also see the same index values that we previously set in Blender by moving elements into other elements. Let's go back to Blender and have another look in the Giants Exporter. Within the Shader tab, we need to specify the path to our game. By clicking Set Game Directory, your game should be selected automatically. If the exporter does not find the path, it can also be specified manually as before. If we now select the vehicle shader.xml in the drop down menu at Shader File, we get a list of parameters that we can assign to our material. Since we want to display blue steel as material later in game, we color our model with Color Mat 0. To do this, we click on the selection box and choose the RGB values 0, 0, 1, and 0. A short explanation about RGB. The first value stands for the red part, the second value for the green part, and the third value for the blue part. The last value is locked to our engine and reflects the material that can be loaded from the giant's engine onto the model. At the bottom, in Variations, we need to select Color Mask so that the shader knows that it will be colored later. By clicking on Add Shader, the parameters selected above for the selected object will be deposited in its materials and later exported to Point I3D. In order for our vehicle shader to work without errors, we need to add a specular map, or more recently, a V mask, which refers to vehicle mask, to the material. The renaming was done because our specular map is very different from the commonly known specular map. 
Each of the individual channels of our V-mask serve their purpose. The red channel is for the scratch positions on our model. The green channel is for the shadows. And the blue channel saves the arrangement of the dirt spots. Let's go back to Material Properties. Select Image Texture for Specular and add our default underscore V-mask. We do the same in the parameter Normal by selecting Normal Map first. Secondly, go to Color and select Image Texture. Afterwards, click Open and add the default underscore normal texture file. To simplify modding for a farming simulator and to create a generally consistent quality across different mods, our developers came up with a standardization for surfaces. It is possible to display prefabricated materials such as steel, plastic, upholstery, or other surface structures in the game on any model. To do this, simply move the UV map in the UV coordinate system. U and V indicate the position values here. To simplify this, we have added a function called UV Vehicle Array in the Giants Exporter. First, select your model in the layout. Switch to Edit Mode and select all faces you want to edit and assign a material to. With a click on UV Editing, the UV Editor opens and we see the UV map of the previously selected object. If necessary, we have to unwrap the UV map. For simple objects, this can be done quickly using the standard functions in Blender. Now, press the key N, or the less than sign, and click on the Giants i3D Exporter button to open our UV Vehicle Array tool. Here you can see all possible surfaces or materials that are supported by our game. Depending on how the UV map is saved within the UV range, a different material will be loaded in-game. If we now select all faces of our model, we can directly move it to the desired UV range by clicking on a material. We move it to Color Mat 0, as defined in the shader parameters before, and can export the model with the exporter now. Let's open the i3D file with the Giants Editor. Open Window, Material Editing, select the model, and have a look at the values. We recognize our material, Blue Steel. We see the paths to our textures and parameters of our model, and open the Custom Shader drop-down menu with a click on the arrow. If we, for example, at Color Mat 0, our material we have defined in Blender earlier, Enter the RGB values 0, 0 0.25, and 0 0.5. We are changing the color to a nice light blue. Here we see how easily the shader can represent something else. Of course, this color selection would have worked one-to-one -one before even exporting this with the exporter. The last value at color mat 0 is our engine material value. Here we can enter, for example, 37 to have a light blue perforated surface. We have to keep in mind that we only need color mat if you want to colorize materials. Attention, unfortunately there is a limit of eight maximum possible colorings per model. If we are already satisfied with the coloring of the default materials in the UV vehicle array tool, we can apply the values directly and do not need a color mat. As you can see, assigning the materials is quick and easy with the help provided. A .png file with the individual surface structures can be found via the folder icon below the video. And don't forget, updates for the UV Vehicle Array tool will be posted at our GDN.